If you ask anyone on the street to name the Roman gods, you'll probably hear names like Jupiter, Mars, and Venus. These gods were immeasurably important to Roman religion, but there's another name that might not be quite as familiar to the modern ear. And that's Vesta, goddess of the home and hearth. This goddess was of central importance to Rome from its founding to its fall, and was intimately connected to Rome's legendary and actual history, as well as its very survival. The Romans honored Vesta in both the private and the public sphere. Privately, it was believed that she resided in the fire of the household hearth, thereby making each home a sacred space. Offerings or libations, bread, salted flour, oil, wine, or milk, these were sprinkled into her flame at mealtime. In the public sphere, Vesta was honored in a circular temple, and it was one of the first temples to be erected in the early Roman Forum. Inside the temple burned a sacred fire, the eternal flame of Vesta. The ancient Romans believed that as long as Vesta's protecting fire burned in that temple, Rome would survive whatever famines, plagues, invasions, or political crises came her way. To keep the fire burning at all times in the temple, a priesthood of women was established to care for it. These were the Vestal Virgins, and their order was the only state-funded full-time priesthood in ancient Rome. Vestals were selected as young girls from the best families in Rome, perhaps to help them better commune with their virginal goddess, and because fire was regarded as a purifying element, Vestals took a 30-year vow of chaste service to Rome. For their sacrifice to Rome, Vestals lived luxurious lives. They lived in the palatial house of the Vestals, which was located adjacent to the temple, just a few steps away from it, and that allowed them to perform their sacred duties day and night. One of their most important duties involved safeguarding vital items. One of these was the Palladium. This was a statue of Pallas Athena that the Romans believed their hero Aeneas had saved during the fall of Troy. Vestals were also tasked with safekeeping some of Rome's most vital documents. This included the last wills and testaments of the emperors, as well as important generals and senators. Vestas' temple was considered the most sacred space in Rome, so anyone who violated the temple's sanctity would suffer the anger of the gods, not to mention the wrath of the Roman Empire. It was an effective deterrent. Yet the greatest duty of a Vestal was to keep the sacred fire burning in the temple. And it was for that reason that the Vestals were held in such high esteem. It was common for emperors and other people of influence to mint Vesta's temple, her priestesses, or an image of the goddess herself on their coins. Vesta's image can also be found on jewelry, such as this man's seal ring. Yet despite the powerful religious position a Vestal held, despite the wealth and political and social influence she wielded, a priestess's privileged life was balanced by the threat of severe punishment should she break her vow of chastity. The Romans feared that a Vestal's broken vow would anger the gods. Therefore, a Vestal who broke her vow was made to descend into a pit under the ground. A lid was sealed and she was essentially buried alive. This was a morbid yet very rare event with only a handful of recorded cases during the centuries the Vestal Order was active. After her years of service to Rome and the temple, Vestals were allowed to retire if they so chose. Some did, retiring with wealth, property, powerful friends, and relative independence. They could marry if they wanted, and Vestals who retired while still in their childbearing years may have gone on to have children. However, it's believed that most Vestals chose to stay with the order. The Vestal lifestyle and the status, it may simply have been too appealing to part with, especially in a world where one in three women died in childbirth and women were expected to defer to their husbands. But as the saying goes, all good things must come to an end, and so it was with the official Vestal Order. With the rise of the first Christian emperors, worship of Vesta and the other ancient Roman gods was criminalized, and the world moved from the Classical Age to the Dark Ages. Of course, this is only a superficial look at the long, complicated history of the Vestal religion and order. It was a powerful and beautiful religion, and fragments of its ancient past still exist in the present. Restorations are always underway in the Roman Forum, and you can visit the ruins of Vestas Temple. It's a remarkable experience to stand in front of the temple and try to just imagine the sacred fire burning inside, the flames crackling and the smoke billowing out the oculus in the roof. You can also visit the ruins of the House of the Vestals, just a few steps away from the temple. Here, you can see the statues of Vestal priestesses who once lived within these walls. And if you're moved by such things, perhaps you can even light a candle in memory of their service to Rome's fiery goddess, Vesta. <laughs>